Hey, good morning, church. Good morning, church. It is a beautiful day out here. Look at this sunrise. You know, it's been kind of a contentious week with the election and COVID numbers on the rise. But, you know, if you look around, it is absolutely beautiful. Yes, it is a little chilly out this morning, but, you know, you got to take what you can get. I think so. I think uh, just being able to appreciate, step back and be grateful in the midst of everything else that's going on and see God's hand, it's pretty special. So uh, good morning to you. I hope wherever you are, uh, you have something you can appreciate today. Maybe as you pray, I will do a little view up. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's do that. Uh, gracious God, we give you thanks for a time to be together again. And in the midst of things we don't understand, in the midst of many things we do understand and our hand in them, uh, you continue to provide uh, this beautiful world for us. Help us to uh, better appreciate it. Help us to better take care of it. Help us to better take care of one another and reach out with the same love you reach out to us. Be with us now and always. Uh, with your care and with your reminder uh, that you are with us always. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's just step out of the way and let uh, let the sunrise guide us for a little bit. sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. 
Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites, who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Word of God, Word of Life. Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard. Upon the beard of Aaron and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing life forevermore. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A perhaps not so inspiring gospel for our week together, but I think also gives us great direction for our time. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us then, when will this be? And what will be the sign of your coming and for the end of the age? Jesus answered them, Beware that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but is not the end yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to be tortured and will put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray, and because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It is a beautiful fall, November afternoon. Uh, there's a little cool breeze, but it's actually quite warm. Uh, here at Hammonasset State Park in Madison, Connecticut, just down the road from Old Saybrook, I came to this beautiful place uh, and I'm sharing it here with you because I thought maybe in, in during such a um, uncertain, volatile, contentious time, uh, during this week of the election that still at this point as of recording there is no uh, clear winner of the presidential election even though a direction is starting to take shape uh, that may, we, maybe together we would just enjoy a beautiful place and that seeing the water and the, the sun starting to go down and the sand behind me and even some passers-by you might see uh, throughout our time together that that being in a place like this is a reminder of, uh, you know, our problems, uh, they're big, but we're part of a bigger world. And the, the overall piece of the world, it, it, it's beautiful. We can take a step back and appreciate it. That it's worth seeing ourselves in context, in a, in a wider backdrop. Uh, and here you can see a long ways with, with beautiful water and sun and sand uh, to, to get a framework of, of where you are in the world. I, I find that kind of perspective really helpful uh, because sometimes we get so caught up in our own stuff or our own perspective on stuff that uh, quite simply it's all we see. 
and uh, it's like we have blinders on or it's like we only can see a couple inches in front of us and we, we don't get a bigger picture of, of the world. And the big picture that I'm seeing on this election week that's undecided on a beautiful fall afternoon is the, the joy of God's creation. I've been revisiting an older book. Um, I think it still holds up. I like what it does. The author's name is Bill Bishop. The book is called The Big Sort. Uh, it highlights presidential election data, county by county, across the country, from the Carter-Ford election up through the uh, bush Kerry election uh, in 2004. So it's, it's, what is that, 16 years old, even the data? But the thesis of, of Bill Bishop's book is that county by county, across our nation. The red counties are getting redder and the blue counties are getting bluer. And the electoral map, here we are 16 years later of an election we had earlier this week, seems to indicate that to be absolutely the truth among us even still. That the national map that we look at uh, when we keep trying to find out who's ahead or who's behind uh, or where our guy stands or where, where the other person stands is it, it's, it's kind of misleading. There aren't really red states and blue states. There's red counties and blue counties. It's cities and it's rural areas. And they tell two different stories of really two different Americas and the way we perceive what's going on, our, our place in society, the way we take care of each other, the way we approach the outside world, and what it is we even think we're about. And as we have seen over the course of absolutely the last four years, but I say it goes back probably at least 20, uh, I've been thinking about those hanging chads of the, 20, of the 2000 election a lot this week and just how uncertain that time period was. Uh, what, we, what we start to see is, is how deeply divided we are. That really, the American ethos is its division. And maybe, maybe that's actually always been true. And what has happened over the course of, of these last few years especially, but I, I think at least uh, at least 20, if not 40, if not 150 years, is that we start to see the other side as our enemy. That whoever it is we vote for, the other, the other candidate and the other party, you know, they're not even Americans. Their voice doesn't count. And the way that we see the world or what we aspire to be. The news outlets have all picked up on that. The, Certainly, the social media has picked on, on that. Even, even our written media is, it, it's completely polarized. And I'd like to believe that somehow, as the church, we have a different story to tell. Now, granted, we stand for certain things. Like, it's important to tell the truth. Like, it's important to protect people. It's important to care for the vulnerable. It's important to, to be a people of, of justice. It's important to be engaged in society. How we do that, the plans we come up with, the laws we create, I mean, of course, they're all flawed. Uh, they're human. Uh, but the Ten Commandments, I think, hold up. Jesus' even, even reduction of those to two, to love God and love our neighbor. As people of faith, I would like to think that those are our guiding principles and that our voting is, is guided by that. Our engagement in society is guided by that. The way we treat other people who are like us and who are not like, this, uh, like us is, is guided by that. 
and that we could actually be a people that that draw others together. That the, the love we see in, in Christ is embracing of all of humanity, of all of this world, just as this, this beautiful sun and beach and ocean. In today's gospel, Jesus speaks of there being wars and, and rumors of wars. And we've, we've seen over the course of these last weeks and months that you better vote for our guy or there's going to be violence. Or you better not do that or there's going to be bloodshed. Uh, we've heard of rumors of, uh, of earthquakes. Well, maybe not earthquakes, but of, of blue tides and red tides. And both sides trumpeting that this will be the, the reckoning, finally, uh, long last of these, these long heated disputes. And what I've, what I've come to see, what I've tried to understand, what I've tried to embrace, is that just as, as this tide of the Long Island Sound and this, this beach stretches on and this, the sun begins to wane behind us, that we should be the people that, that bring calm. We should be the people that bring peace. We should be the people that bring others together. Doesn't mean we don't stand for anything. Of course we do. It doesn't mean we're not engaged. Of course we should be. It doesn't mean we're wish-washy in the way we approach others. We're absolutely clear about how we approach others. We are to love as Christ loved us, to pour out our lives for the sake of one another and for the sake of this world. That is a pretty high calling to which the Spirit pushes us, to which we are deeply afraid to engage sometimes. And yet, and yet here we are. I think it's important for us, regardless of how we vote, to take back the conversation from the extremes on either end. Because we, we can't live and function in a country where we see half the people as our enemy. We don't just have to react and respond to the loudest person shouting. We can start to see the things that we, we all care about, that we all embrace, that we all hope for the future. And how can we be even more inclusive, more embracing, more engaged in the way we have the conversations we need to have with others to help them see it too? Our psalm today is about the unity of all of God's people. I used to sing that in my Old Testament class when I was in seminary. And yet it's so hard to see. It's so hard to do. We've stopped talking to each other. We've written each other off. We can't wait until one person wins and another person is shamed uh, because, because they lost. And we claim our majority by 51%. That's a problem. And it's been a problem for a very long time. Mitch Albom wrote this uh, article this week that uh, this election is meaningless unless we figure out what to do on Wednesday. Well, it's later in the week than that. But the, the idea holds up that it's, it's not just about deciding one way or the other who it is that's going to lead us. It's about deciding how we're going to live next door to our neighbors. It's about deciding how we're going to care for the most vulnerable among us. It's about deciding how it is we're going to see each other through this pandemic that continues to go on and continues to get more difficult and continues to feel like there's no end in sight. We need each other. Pretending that isn't true isn't going to help us. 
I love this passage from, from Joshua. We don't rarely ever read the book of Joshua. But it's got the, the great line from Joshua, is probably the only verse anybody knows, uh, is that, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The, the people of Israel, from the very beginning, throughout the Hebrew Scriptures, is always entangled in, in idol worship. Uh, and finally, it comes to the point, whose side are you on? Are you, are you going to be with the God who redeemed you from slavery in Egypt or, or not? And that's the way we, we so often see this, these things. You're either with us or you're against us. You're either for us or you're opposed to us. You're either my friend or you're my enemy. But I think it's a bigger view than that. I mean, think of all of the, the idols that we put up in place all the time. We put our political allegiance, our patriotism, our sports teams, of course, what church we go to our families of origin. We, we tend to worship the things that we know and love at the expense of someone else. And what if, what if, to serve this, this God who calls us out of bondage to that which keeps us captive, our own sin and brokenness, our narrow view at the world, our or pain and suffering we, we wish upon others, even, even passively, because they're not like us. What if to stand with the God who redeems us and, and calls us to new life, what if that is, is our stand? And to do that, we need to embrace each other. Over these last four years, I've been trying, and I can't say I do it particularly well, but I've been trying to do the things to, to learn to understand those I, I don't agree with. Not so I can argue against them, but to see where they're coming from, to see what's going on in their lives, to see why they think the way they do. And again, not to critique, not to win, but to try to embrace them as other human beings that God also loves. These next four years, these next four days, these next few hours, it's what I hope for all of us, is that we can become less entangled from our sides, and that we can start to to see that we really are one humanity, that there really is a one path forward, and we need all of us to get there. After wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and all of these other things that Jesus warns us about, uh, and, and highlights are coming, as, as we've been living through, people making those claims constantly at, with every drumbeat of propaganda over the course of these decades. At the end of it, he says it's not going to be easy. That following him is a path to the cross. What people want is power and control and wealth and privilege. And what Jesus calls us to is to give up our lives for the sake of this world, and just in the way he gives up his life for us. That's a different viewpoint than one you'll see anywhere else. It's a challenge. It's a calling. It's a vote of God's love and confidence in each of us. And as a community of faith, with people who vote one way and people who vote another, and people who stayed home and didn't vote at all, how can we be people, be engaged in the love and renewal and redemption of this world in our own families, in our own neighborhood, in our own communities, in our country, and in our world.
it's going to take a lot of courage and faith and putting ourselves on the line because that's what love does. And so as I'm enjoying this beautiful sun and beautiful sea and beautiful sand, I'm reminded that sometimes being the calmest person in the conversation is exactly who we're called to be. That to listen is sometimes better than being heard. And that consoling one another and embracing one another is certainly better than winning an argument or an election. What the future holds, I don't know. I don't know any more than you do. But as I see myself on this beach on this beautiful afternoon, I know it's in God's hands. And I know I'm called to live faithfully in it. And I know that you are too. So let's get back to work. And however we can do that in these COVID days and embrace God's future calling us forward. God be with you. And peace. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home under the shadow. join me in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray that we will listen carefully to you, God, and be receptive to the ways you speak to us each day, especially when we least expect it or are slow to recognize your voice amid the noise and competing voices in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Sun and wind, bushes and birds, nothing in creation is outside your concern. 
In your mercy, tend to it all. Give us a spirit of generosity toward all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Quiet our words when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Be with this congregation to create a community of mercy for one another and for all of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant life, health, healing, and courage to all who are in need. Especially today, we pray for our brothers and sisters, Eleanor, Brandy, Logan, Addie, Britt, Mary Sue, Sandra, Tom, John, David, Al, Bob, Elizabeth, Shirley, and Carol, Deborah, Joanne, Steve, Jean, Joan, Mary Ann, Greg, Megan, Karen, Marilyn, Randy, Amadeo, Caroline, Roy, Heidi, Harry, and Lorraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All of these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to you, O Lord. Amen. It is a tumultuous time, as you well know, but it is also the perfect time for gratitude. We are God's people here in this place, and I am so grateful to you. I am grateful to you for continuing to be St. Paul Lutheran Church here in Old Saybrook and for your ongoing support to make ministry happen as the people of St. Paul here in Old Saybrook. Uh, Thanks so much for your ongoing generosity. You can continue to to give through the website, which I'll put down here, uh, as well as in the regular ways, by either dropping it by the office or in the mail or through automatic giving, as so many of you uh, have done and continue to do. I am uh, eternally grateful for your tremendous generosity, especially in these very uncertain, trying days. And in that light, I mean, we, uh, last week, we were getting ready to celebrate here in the sanctuary as we were going to open up having indoor worship uh, here for the very first time on All Saints Sunday last week. Uh, That didn't happen as Old Saybrook entered into the, the red zone. And even though this week, late in the week, it became clear that Old Saybrook is going to be in the orange, uh, most of Connecticut now is moving either into the red zone or is already in the red zone. I heard today that 68 towns are now uh, considered red and our overall uh, infection rate is is 5%. I mean, it was 0.8 not too long ago and continues to climb. So we're going to just kind of continue to play it by ear and watch what's going on and continue to just pivot and figure out how to be church together as you have so amazingly done so far over the course of these last eight months. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, If you haven't seen them yet, I encourage you to go back and uh, on my YouTube channel, I'll put it on this side, uh, where we've got our St. Paul stories, one, two, and three. Uh, for this year, 2020. Uh, They've been a part of Good Morning Church uh, and and our traditional service over the course of the last three weeks. Some of them have been in person when we had Lawn Church out there. Uh, But thanks to so many people who made that happen. So thanks to to Tammy who helped me do some of the filming and uh, do a little bit of the recruiting. But but thank you so much to Steve Anderson, Knut Ogren of Camp Calumet, Heidi Wise, Tim Kellogg, Pastor Chip Anderson of CPC in the Hill, Bishop Jim Hazelwood of our New England Synod, Marcia Young, Charlie Brown, Carol Voigt, Joe Cinebaldo, uh, Pastor Amy Hollis, who runs the Shoreline Soup Kitchen and Pantries, uh, Tina Boscom, who does uh, Bare Necessities and is a member here, as well as Marcia Finkelday, Bill True, and of course, you, because it's you and I that make this ministry happen together. So I invite you to go back and look at those stories again and just see this uh, amazing spirit that is here among us, even as we have to figure out what it means to be church together during a pandemic. You probably have already received, and many of you have already returned, your pledge card for 2021. This, this is your intention of what you plan to give 
uh, next year. I know these are uncertain times. I know, I don't even know what's going on half the time in our world or, or in our community, and yet we continue to faithfully take one step at a time. A pledge card is, is a step. It's not a uh, contract. It's not a legal document. It is your intent of how you seek to be generous for the coming year. So if you have not filled out one of these yet, I urge you to do so. If you need another one, just let me or Kim know in the office and we'll make sure you get one uh, as we kind of figure out how it is we're going to do church as we move forward. So I thank you for your ongoing generosity, not just this week, uh, but every week and 52 weeks into the future as we think about our ministry together here as St. Paul in 2021. So thanks for your ongoing generosity. Thanks for being who you are. And remember, you are God's people here in this place. You are God's hands and feet and eyes and ears and warm embrace to a world in need. God bless you and thank you. Hello, friends. Boy, before I lit this match, it was really, really dark out here, wasn't it? I think I'd better light another one. The darkness out here kind of reminded me a little bit of maybe how some of you are feeling after eight months of being in um, quarantine, missing your grandparents, missing friends that live across the country, or even just down the, the road that you're not able to see. So we are called to be the light. Now, it was really dark out here before my one match that I lit, but look at how much brighter it is. And what's great about having this little light, I'm called not to just light my light and keep it nice and tight in, but I'm called to light up the world and share it with others. Hi. Ways, <laughs> Hi Jeff. Hi. So ways that we're called to light, show God's light, not just our light, to have God's light shine through us is by encouraging one another. We're called to be an encouragement. So every night, that's a great time to pray for um, things that you, the change you would like to see in the world. So I thought we could do a prayer this evening together. Uh, gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for the opportunity to be a light, to show your light through ourselves. Help us to encourage one another, find ways throughout our day to not only encourage those that we see in person um, and that we love and adore, but those people that we don't know yet and that maybe are sometimes hard to love. Thank you for always giving us our light and knowing that it's there uh, no matter what. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Tammy. You bet. I think maybe we need to find some marshmallows. Ooh, I like those. <laughs> you know, I would find marshmallows to be a real encouragement. <laughs> Go in peace. <laughs>
heart's wide open stand. Arise, O heirs of glory, the bridegroom is at hand. The saints who hear in patience their cross and sufferings pour, shall live and reign forever when sorrow is no more. Around the throne of glory the Lamb they shall behold in triumph cast before Him their diadems of gold. Our hopes and expectations O Jesus now appear Arise, O Son, so longed for O this benighted sphere With hearts and hands uplifted We plead, O Lord, to see The day of earth's redemption That sets your people It is the next day, so thank you for spending an entire day with us from sunup yesterday morning to sunup this morning, and I hope the rest of this morning uh, is is great as well. Yeah, this is beautiful. Holy smokes, check it out. There are, there are worse views. <laughs> this does not stink. This is a great view. So thanks to Tammy over here for getting up two mornings early in a row. I know she did not really want to, but she got up to see these sunrises and be with all of us. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Do you know that this is the same place that we got up super early Easter morning um, to tape that? What was that? We did like a time lapse thing. And oh. then uh, Mia and I sang the Alleluia that Al had written yeah uh, over it as kind of the, the good morning for our Easter celebration service boy 15 years ago no that was in that was in eight April. months ago yeah. yeah yeah who knew what we didn't know what we didn't know we, we didn't uh, thanks to Al again for music and Kim for putting the slides and stuff together and Karen for being our reader this morning and for all of you for being with us and for your faithfulness this is a uh, tumultuous time we'll see if today brings any more uh what's the word i'm even looking for calm or uh direction to where we're going but i know your faithfulness and witness will be that calm for others so thank you that's right and just remember too that you know i know this week in e-news i wrote about um doing the little things and that just know that what you do matters everything that we do, especially the little things, um, it really does matter, especially in this time. So with that, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you, Jeff. And I invite you as uh, we kind of step out maybe a little bit and uh, observe this beautiful sunrise, that uh, you share the peace with others and, and be that peace, uh, especially with so many uh, who are anxious during this time. So peace be with you all. Lord, Lord, open unto me, open unto me light for my darkness, open unto me courage for my fear, open unto me hope for my despair, open unto me peace for my turmoil, open unto me joy for my sorrow, open up to me strength for my weakness, open unto me wisdom for my confession, open unto me forgiveness for my sins, open unto me love for my hates, open unto me thyself for myself. Lord, Lord, open unto me. Amen. Well, that wasn't so bad. Holy smokes, and look at that. It's gone already. Just like that, Jeff. Just like that.
Just yep. like ice cream at Dairy Queen. Man, it's pretty good how we did that with the green screen. <laughs> Just kidding. That's for real. You know, I would find marshmallows to be a real encouragement. <laughs> Go in peace. <laughs> Oh, you have one girlfriend. I do, just the one. <laughs> Morning, chickens. Good morning, chickens. Hi, I brought you breakfast. Mm. One over oh, here that is. Favorite. What do you got there for breakfast, Jeff? Oh, a little yogurt and oatmeal. Okay, you got something to tell me? Okay, get in there. Come on, Cody, get in. You know, it doesn't matter which kids they are, always leaving dishes around. <laughs> Now, got, girls, you've one job to stay inside your new little home. Right. Don't worry, we'll be back. <laughs>